1968, you uh, produced and directed a show called Petula with a British pop singer, Petula Clark, very popular at the time. A lot of controversy uh, surrounded that show. Can you tell us about that? What happened? Well, preceding Lucy, I actually did a special with um, Leslie Uggams called Hallelujah Leslie. Leslie was a star on Broadway in a show called Hallelujah Baby. And that became basically a specials trilogy from Leslie's special and ABC, we went to Petula Clark, and then from Petula we went to Elvis Presley. When I did the Petula Clark show, uh, it was one of the incredible experiences of my whole career. The sponsor, um, Plymouth Motor Cars, had actually bought uh, Nancy Sinatra to be the star of their Plymouth special. And at the last minute, the agents for Nancy made a deal with Royal Crown Cola, which was a big soft drink company, uh, to do uh, Nancy. I guess they paid her more money or something like that. And as a result, Nancy dropped out of the special. Well, Plymouth and her agency and her uh, advertising agency were freaking out, trying to say, you know, what can we put in there? Well, Petula, who I'd worked with on Hullabaloo when she had a hit record called Downtown, was sold by, in those days, it was GAC, which is now ICM, International Creative Management. And they were her agent. And they talked Plymouth into buying Petula Clark, who America really didn't know other than as a recording artist. And so I had to fly to Mejev, Switzerland, to meet with Petula. I think the original show was given to Greg Garrison, who was later the successful producer or director of the Dean Martin series. And evidently, they were like oil and water when they met. And so Petula wouldn't accept Greg as her director and producer. And hence, I got the call. And I had to fly over to Mejev to see if we were, could work together. We had a wonderful lunch. I remember flying over there, and I was exhausted. I was doing something before that. <laughs> and then uh, on the way back 24 hours later, you know, I was like, I couldn't believe I had gone all the way, all those miles, just to have lunch with her. And I came back, and she told her agents she liked me and would do the special. So I came back, and uh, I worked with a real talented team, um, Alan Bly, um, who was the writer, producer of the Smothers Brothers show later on, the Andy Williams series, and so forth. And we, and there was a, a wonderful songwriter, writer named Mason Williams, who was Alan's partner at the time. And uh, they wrote basically this wonderful, I, I had a concept that when I do a special, I don't want anybody else but the star to be able to do it. So it has to be tailor made like a, like a suit of cloth. And so it would all derive from her music, you know, which we did. And when she came here, uh, I had decided that who would be a wonderful guest star who I idolized as a kid was Harry Belafonte. So I called Harry and he turned me down. And so I decided not to give up and I called him again and I said, look, Petula is blonde and blue eyed. <laughs> and he said, yeah. And I said, think of the two of you on that screen on national television, it'd be perfect. And he said, well, if you'll write me a, a strong song for the special, I'll do it, which we did uh, and in the Belafonte segment. And in that segment, the two of them duetted on a song called Paths of Glory, which was a song Petula wrote, which was uh, basically an anti-war song. But we send our sons off to be butchered and so forth in, in war. So what happened on the show? So what happened was that before the show was even produced, um, I got a call from, uh, oh, I called, I was so excited that I called the Plymouth agent involved and said, you're never going to believe this, but I've got Harry Belafonte, who has not done television, you know, except his own specials, et cetera, to be the guest. And the guy said, great, what color do you want your Plymouth, you know? And I said, laughing, and, I, and I, I laughed. and hung up and he was so excited that I had booked him. About 15 minutes later, I get a phone call from him saying, we got a problem. And I said, what's the problem? Let's find out what the problem is on the next tape. 
All right, you left us in suspense there with the Petula <laughs> Clark show. So uh, Harry Belafonte was a guest on the show. Um, what happened? What, was, what caused the controversy with Harry Belafonte and Petula Clark? Well, I got a call from the uh, sponsor and the network, NBC, and they said, unfortunately, the contract for Petula says that you have to have guest stars on the show. So we'll accept Belafonte but you must put somebody else on the show with them. And I said, but the show's designed to just have Belafonte. So they submitted a list to me of people they recommended. And it was like Milton Berle, Ray Bolger, I remember those names specifically. And I said, no, they're not acceptable. So I was called to go to Detroit, Michigan to meet the president of Plymouth Cars. I went there and now there was a big internal fight between the Detroit Young and Rubicon Agency and the New York Rubicon a Young and Rubicon agency over who they were going to back. And they had a guy at Plymouth named Doyle Lott, who to me was a racist. I mean, he didn't want Belafonte because Belafonte was black and he didn't want a black star on the show with Petula. And what had happened basically when I got the call from the Young and Rubicon guy that I thought was going to congratulate me for delivering Belafonte, he said, we have a problem. And I said, what's the problem? And he said, well, off the record, uh, this guy, Doyle Lott, doesn't want Belafonte on the show. And I said, why? He said, well, on the record, it's because he doesn't think he's that popular anymore, and off the record, it's because he doesn't want a black man on the show. And I said, great. I said, if I'm forced to take Belafonte off the show, I will go on national television and quote you. He said, I'll call you right back. And he hung up. Two minutes later, a guy called, and he said, I've just replaced the guy you just spoke to, and uh, you need to come to Detroit to plead your case. So, so I went to Detroit. What, what did you do or what did you say? Uh, the guy from Plymouth was great. He was, he was a car builder. He had nothing to do with show business. And he said to me basically, um, you know, are you satisfied with Belafonte and the show concept? And I said, yes. Is Petula? And I said, absolutely. And he said, we'll give you a decision. And uh, I went back. And the decision was to go forward with the special. So then this Doyle Lott character said to me, you know, congratulations, you're going to, you know, we're going to win Emmys on this and so forth and so on. Now we did the show and we got to this Paths of Glory song. And originally I had staged it where it was after Harry had done his solo act and then Petula enters from backstage uh, and she moves downstage and stops and she's over his shoulder. And something wasn't working, and we did like three takes like that, and I finally said, stop. Uh, I went down, and I told Petula, next time you come out, go all the way up to Harry and stand alongside of him, which she did. And she immediately, emotionally, I could tell the two of them were really into the lyrics and what the song was saying. Mm -hmm. And she reached out and touched Harry's forearm. And I thought a herd of elephants had just left the client's booth. And Doyle Lott had gone bananas, bonkers and he wanted this edited out of the show immediately. You thought they had fornicated on the air. So I immediately, when the show was over, the first call I got was from NBC's executive saying, whatever you're into, we're behind you, which was great to hear. So I went down to the editing room with Petula's husband, and we made the editor erase the first three takes. So the only take we had was that last take of them touching. And the editor at NBC was like shaking and he made me sign a document giving him authority to do this as he erased the tapes. So the show aired this way? The show aired this way. And what was the reaction? Uh, I think everybody thought it was a publicity hoax that they, uh, you know, it was like that's what they were complaining about, et cetera. But at the time, I mean, jobs were being, you know, in jeopardy at the agency. It was, a, it was an international incident picked up by Newsweek, Time Magazine, uh, big stories about it. Belafonte was going to run on The Tonight Show and tell all blacks not to buy Plymouth. The guy from Plymouth called me and said, please talk him out of it. You know, we've done all these great charitable things. And it wasn't their fault at all. And they fired Doyle a lot. Years later, I was in the South doing another special, and I read a headline from the uh, Ku Klux Klan newspaper, which said, you know, Jew producer, fires, you know, great American at Plymouth and so forth. And uh, it, was, it was quite an experience. And, and I, had, I was so naive, I couldn't believe in 1967 this was still going on. But it was the first time a black and a white had touched in primetime television. 